Almighty Texas with You Can Call Me. I love that. It's a glorious, glorious song. Now, one of the delightful revelations for me of the 2020 Olympics, you know, the 2020 slash 21 Olympics, well, the Olympics we've just had, was seeing Tom Daly there before his dive knitting. Did you see him knitting? Didn't that cardigan lovely that he did? What a triumph it was. He said that he found knitting helps calm his nerves as well as helping for good causes and he knitted that really cute thing to put his uh, gold medal in, didn't he? That little holder to put it in. Um, he's been auctioning off his handiwork for charity. But could it be that Tom's knitting might have helped him become the Olympic champion? Now, Lee Chambers is an environmental psychologist and life coach who's worked with top athletes. And I'm delighted to say that Lee joins us now. Good morning. Welcome to Good Morning Sunday. It's a pleasure to be with you, Kate. Oh, beautiful to be with you. Now, what's that twang I hear? Where are you from? Uh, Preston in the Oh, well, West. somebody had to be, didn't they? You know, somebody has to be from Lancashire. We can't help it. I mean, it's all right in Lancashire, but it's not quite Yorkshire, is it? But there you go. <laughs> um, tell me about that knitting then. Do you think that might have helped, Tom? So there's a definite element to when we're looking to achieve performance, looking at the relaxation and regenerative aspects. So for Tom, he's obviously been on a real journey. He's shared a lot of the challenges that he's had, but he's really found a way to be able to, you know, relax between the high performing events that he does and have something where he can kind of get into a bit of a flaw and just create something from nothing, which has been really beneficial for him in terms of his mindset as he looks to, you know, stand on those diving boards and really perform at such a high level. Now, it strikes me, because I tried knitting during lockdown, because, you know, it's been it's been a stressful 18 months or so, hasn't it, for lots of us, uh, well, for all of us, and I yeah. thought, I'll have a go at that, and I just found it really frustrating. It's the opposite of relaxing me. Um, should I have just kept persevering, or is it okay to just ditch the knitting and try something else as my technique? Well, I think the beauty of relaxation is that there's something out there for everybody, and for some people, it's something a lot more creative and active, whereas for some people, it's more expressive. And for other people, it's something that's really slow and quite quiet. And as we look to, you know, acquire new skills, if we're actually enjoying the process of, you know, going wrong and finding different ways to do <laughs> things, we start to get a really good idea of, of what works for us. Because if something's, you know, becoming increasingly stressful, it's probably not the relaxation <laughs> activity that's going to be uniquely positive for us. So when you've thrown it across, when you've thrown that knitting across the room and it's hit the cat, you know, that's probably, knitting's probably not going to be your thing, is it? Andy in Ellsbury's been in touch and he says that my method of relaxation is to pick up a pencil and pad and draw something. It's so engrossing that all you can do is relax and immerse yourself in the task. Does relaxation have to be practical? Do you have to do a thing? Um, so, again, it's very it's like a personal expression. For a lot of people, it's quite hard to just sit there and try and be still because we live in such a dynamic and quick-moving world. So the ability to actually carry an activity out where our hands are busy but our mind is quiet and it really helps us to focus in the moment and just slow ourselves down. And obviously, you know, it could be drawing, it could be gardening, it could be knitting. But for a lot of people, they find this idea of trying to sit there and meditate and be silent and still. It's actually quite challenging. And the ability to find relaxation through something that keeps us quite active, but stops us ruminating on the past or worrying about the future, actually is just really relaxing in its own way. So how do we get there? Because Maz in Glasgow has been in touch. She's had a big bereavement recently. Really sorry to hear that, Maz. We're praying for you and thinking of you. Maz is struggling to sleep and she's finding it really difficult to just do that unwinding, relax herself down to get ready. What? Where should we start? If we're looking for something that is going to be the key to, a, to our relaxation and, and in that sort of really traumatic experience that Maz is having, how, how, where, where might Maz start? Yeah, I think it's so often looking and almost reflecting on things you've enjoyed in the past because things that we've enjoyed are often the things that relax us and those are things that sometimes, as life changes, we kind of leave them behind but often the ability to pick them back up, it drags us back to those times. Nostalgia is really powerful when we're having a challenging time and also with things like knitting, you are in control of the motion and it helps us to feel a little bit more in control of the situation, even when we're in very difficult and turbulent times in our personal lives. Talking of being in control of the motion, I hear that one of your relaxations is dancing, is that right? And music? 
Yeah, so a big <laughs> part of that for me is uh, I've had some challenges myself. Sure. I, I lost the ability to walk in 2014, so dancing's been a bit of a way for me to get my coordination between my arms and my legs back. And um, what does it do for you? What does that music do? What do you like to dance to? Um, well, to be honest, I, I, I like a bit of a disco number, really take it back. Beautiful. And, yeah, get get those hips moving. I can see you in a spandex onesie right now, covered in glitter. <laughs> 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 what about crosswords and Sudoku? I know a lot of people like Sudoku. Do you know what I do? Don't tell anybody. But what I do is when I've got a Sudoku in the back of the paper, just fill the numbers in really quickly so people are impressed on public transport. I've not actually done it <laughs> properly, but it makes me feel really good about myself and I've got good self-esteem then. Uh, what about those kind of things, those sort of quizzes and crosswords and things? Yeah, and, I mean, as human beings, we absolutely love solving problems. We love coming up with solutions and it works us cognitively in a way that really helps us to feel, you know, meaningful and anchored. And again, as we gradually solve that puzzle, it's like a who done it. We absolutely love that kind of thing. It really is fulfilling to be able to go from, you know, what is a scattered bit of chaos into a fully solved puzzle. And again, that's a great way to actually anchor into the moment. We've got to come up with the solutions. We can't be off in the clouds thinking about other things but we're actually there solving it and actually when once we get that solution or sometimes even in that frustration of not being able to solve it or get that word it actually feels great when we finally get there i think it's the same i think people that relax in that way is crosswords and zucos and stuff is the same sort of people who they relax by ticking things off their to-do list you know that sort of organized systematic when it feels like you know they've got all the ducks in order and it's all nice and neat and tidy and that's how they relax into something what about the natural world what about uh, the environment around us because lots of people use that don't they i mean i'm a mind you don't need me to bang on about it again because i bang on about it every week but swimming's my thing you know swimming outside is my thing and that's where my relaxation comes from i'm guessing the natural world has a big role to play in this gardening and that sort of thing yeah so really it's massive if we think about where we evolved as a species if we think about where we spent millions of years we've been surrounded by natural materials uh, being out in the outdoors it doesn't really matter everyone has their own expression of that you know for you it's outdoor swimming for some people it's being in the middle of a forest in the silence but we can see more shades of green than any other color and we feel a real affinity to the world around us when it is you know those forests those rivers those streams and just being in those environments you know, there's a lot, so many different benefits to help us to focus, to reduce our blood pressure, to reduce our stress levels. And even for those people who don't have, you know, great access to natural environments, even bringing some natural environments into your property or having a little micro farm or just a little something on your windowsill just helps you to yeah. ground you in those moments. A little spider plant to worry over and look after and nurture, that helps, doesn't it? Uh, Lee Chambers, environmental psychologist and life coach, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you for all those top tips. So many ideas there to help us unwind today. And of course, if you stay tuned to BBC Radio 2, this evening in particular, it's our chill fest. I feel like I should, should say that in sort of more velvety tones.